How about you, Jay? Within, yep. Yeah, well, within one sphere of influence, I think that's what he's saying. And and notice how how positive it is. Compassion fills that void in your life. Not, nothing nothing Machiavellian like like uh, the end justifies the means. And <laughs> he, he, he he's, he's essentially telling us you don't even have to think that far. Mm. What if what 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 can you do uh, ab- about life? Because you will soon be dead. Mm. <laughs> and he 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 doesn't he doesn't worry about the legacy you're going to leave behind your children and so on. Mm. And and I think very practical. Um, I like to think that by 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 following his nine points, you you save a lot of energy. Welcome to Tip Talks. We are at episode seven, season one. And to make things a little different, we decided to look at a humorous speech. Now, for those of you who have been in Toastmasters, humor is always something that's rather quite difficult to achieve. And not very, not very many people actually get it. But today we have Mr. Tim Minchin, who's actually giving a commencement speech to, I think it was the University of uh Oh my gosh, I forgot. But you'll see it in the video. <laughs> okay. But it is fascinating simply because it is humorous. And at the same time, it talks about life in a very realistic way. Over to you, Dino. Okay. Thank you, Paul. So tonight, um, we do the obligatory self introduction. So because you've been watching the show, or the assumption is you've been watching us, <laughs> but if this is your first time, well, here it is. Um, I'm Dino Santos. I am one of the hosts of Tip Talks and of our parent show, The Leader's Edge. I'm a Toastmaster, been one since 81, a Hall of Famer, a, a consultant trainer. Over to you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Dino. Let's go over to Jen. And then I'll be yeah. the last person to introduce myself. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Paul, for mentioning my name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Toastmaster as well, nowhere near as, as, as long as Dino has been. I'm an engineer by profession, but, but I also love classics, uh, movies, cars, uh, music, certainly. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, we were just talking about where I first encountered the name you mentioned. Thank you, Jet. And many of you already know me. I'm Paul. Recently, just became a dual citizen, and uh, you know, to make the story short, I've been around the block too many times. <laughs> okay, I've been up and down the corporate ladder, been fired twice, raised four kids, lost all my money. I've been through a lot of things, but that's me. Okay, and I bring today to mention who will hopefully entertain all of us. Go ahead, Dina. All right, so we'll play his video now. Gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ooh, Tim hold on. Uh, I don't think it's optimized. Yeah, uh, agreed. And I should have shared. <laughs> yes. Hello, medyo talagang ano, tumatanda. Okay, and then uh, I'd go to advance because I'm just going to share the computer audio. Uh, this is to avoid, you know, um, copyright issues with the video owner. So, here we go. Gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tim Minchin. In darker days, I did a corporate gig at a conference for this big company who made and sat and sold accounting software. In a bid, I presume, to inspire their salespeople to greater heights, they'd forked out 12 grand for an inspirational speaker who was this extreme sports guy who had had a couple of his limbs frozen off when he got stuck on a ledge on some mountain. It was weird. Software salespeople, I think, need to hear from someone who has had a long, successful and happy career in software sales, not from an overly optimistic ex-mountaineer. Some poor guy who had arrived in the morning hoping to learn more about sales techniques ended up going home worried about the blood flow to his extremities. It's not inspirational, it's confusing. And if the mountain was meant to be a symbol of life's challenges and the loss of limbs a metaphor for sacrifice, the software guy's not going to get it, is he? Because he didn't do an arts degree, did he? 
He should have. Arts degrees are awesome and they help you find meaning where there is none. And let me assure you, there is none. Don't go looking for it. Searching for meaning is like searching for a rhyme scheme in a cookbook. You won't find it and it'll bugger up your souffle. <laughs> if you didn't like that metaphor, you won't like the rest of it. <laughs> Point being, I'm not an inspirational speaker. I've never lost a limb on a mountainside, metaphorically or otherwise, and I'm certainly not here to give career advice because, well, I've never really had what most would consider a job. Okay, I think we, we pause there for a while. <laughs> and uh, we need to uh, unmute ourselves so we can react to it. Over to you, Paul. Well, you know, the, if you want to really create a hook, uh, he started off really, really well. Mm. And Darker Days, you know, it sounded, it sounded so serious <laughs> what he was going to talk about. And he talks about, you know, having lost limbs, climbing up a mountain. It does sound very, very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And in terms of getting your attention, he definitely got it. Okay. I, and go ahead. I, I concur. Um, he, 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 poked, uh, he, he poked fun at a lot of what the HR people do sometimes you know, without intending to. They, 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 they hire uh, somebody who is very, very popular at that moment but is not really you know in the same industry as the company that they hired him to do an inspirational talk for so he's got a point there um, like for example what if you invited Nick Vujicic who I, I like by the way he's very, he's very inspiring and that would make sense if he got invited to my church okay but if um, he got invited for example, to um, an assisted living home to, to do a talk. Um, that, okay, it would still kind of make sense, but it would also seem almost cruel <laughs> to, to, uh, to have him talk in a place like that because, you know, um, most of the people there uh, want to be cheered up instead of um, depressed. <laughs> so th those are my thoughts on it. He, he, he's beautifully ironic and honest uh, because things like that happen all the time. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Dina. How about you, Jet? What do you think of the f I, just the start? I, I like speech? how I like how he he mentions metaphor. Uh, seems to be setting the stage for what else is to come. Uh, I prefer to use the word analogy, but but we know what he means. He, I, I think he's, he's going to make he's going to illustrate, if you will, lack of a better term, what he means. I I I can almost see this guy who lost his limbs. It's not a very pleasant sight. <laughs> I can almost see that mountain and and that, and that ice and that snow. And I, I think he's he's fairly good at it, uh, even if it was just the last the first few seconds. And I uh, look forward to the rest of to hearing the rest of it. Mm. However, I have had large groups of people listening to what I say for quite a few years now, and it's given me an inflated sense of self-importance. So I will now, at the ripe old age of 37.9, bestow upon you nine life lessons. To echo, of course, the nine lessons of carols of the traditional Christmas service, which is also pretty obscure. You might find some of this stuff inspiring, you'll definitely find some of it boring, and you'll definitely forget all of it within a week. <laughs> And be warned, there will be lots of hokey similes and obscure aphorisms which start well but end up making no sense. So listen up or you'll get lost, like a blind man clapping in a pharmacy trying to echolocate the contact lens fluid. <laughs> it's looking for my old poetry teacher. Here we go. Ready? One, you don't have to have a dream. Americans on talent shows always talk about their dreams. Fine, if you have something you've always wanted to do, dreamed of, like in your heart, go for it. After all, it's something to do with your time, chasing a dream. And if it's a big enough one, it'll take you most of your life to achieve. So by the time you get to it and are staring to the, into the abyss of the meaninglessness of your achievement, you'll be almost dead, so it won't matter. <laughs> I never really had one of these dreams, and so I advocate passionate dedication to the pursuit of short-term goals. 
Be micro-ambitious. Put your head down and work with pride on whatever is in front of you. You never know where you might end up. Just be aware the next worthy pursuit will probably appear in your periphery, which is why you should be careful of long-term dreams. If you focus too far in front of you, you won't see the shiny thing out the corner of your eye. Right? Good. Advice. All right, so uh, let's... Uh, um, I'm, I'm not going to like pause with every single nine of the things that he said, but I think this is significant enough that... Paul, would you like us to react to it? Uh, okay, now, it, considering who he's talking to, all right, if I understand these guys are just graduating from college, come on, <laughs> you go back to your college days. Did you have any big dreams when you graduated? Or were you just dreaming about where's the gimmick tonight? Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> more more like where were we going to have the party later? <laughs> you, you, you weren't planning on being president of the country or president of the CEO or CEO of a corporation. So the, the one thing that I really appreciate about, at least for me, when it comes to humor, you know, I might be talking about myself, for example, making fun of myself. But if it's humor that you could imagine yourself or you yourself did it, okay, the more you start laughing. He just says, hey, I did that too. You know, I'm that dumb, if you want to say. <laughs> so, and then he really hit a point there because if you listen to most commencement speeches, they are about, you know, go have a dream and soar and fly high. Mm. And this guy goes, what if you don't have a dream? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? uh, which, is, which is really good because for me, it's far more uh, realistic, maybe authentic, if you want to say. Uh, in fact, personally, uh, I only started getting my dream, my my dreams about what I should be in my late fifties. Mm. Okay, and uh, that, that's a story all, all on its own. But you know, I, I shouldn't did have a dream. Oh, I did have a dream when I graduated from college, but it evaporated very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, with you, Jet. Yeah. Well, I I I myself, uh, about that age, I, I would have wanted to be. Uh, uh, a CEO of some multinational company somewhere by now. If I had become a priest, I should be pope by now. That kind of thing. <laughs> it was never that serious. But I, I yeah, I, I, I did have games, and and then very quickly, probably the following day, I think I discarded it <laughs> in favor of smaller dreams at the time. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's 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 interesting. Um, I don't get why he used the blind man, but that, but it made me laugh. I mean, I mean, blind man looking for a contact lens. What is a blind man going to look <laughs> with a contact lens? And that, that, that's how he, that's, that, that's, apparently that's how he speaks, or, or at least in this speech. Uh, if you miss it, <laughs> if you miss it, tough. Yeah. Oh, well, thank God he doesn't bother explaining it. <laughs> that only made yes, it worse. That, 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 uh, uh, absolutely, yes, yes, yeah, if, yeah. Like I said, if you miss it, tough for you. Mm. Uh, it is an intelligent speech, but he was counting on the intelligent audience. I mean, these guys yes. got through college. They must be smart. But if they're there and they have a student loan, that wasn't very smart. <laughs> uh, still, uh, my takeaway from that, and I love it, was he, he's saying that pay closer attention to your short-term dreams you know whatever is in front of you uh, give it your 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 best and so I resonate with that because sometimes uh, something that's really long term it, it's too unrealistic to to pursue but what's right there in front of you sure and then be open to the next one or to other things that might show up on the periphery I mean how did how did the show come into the picture? <laughs> it, it happened because I saw it on the periphery of doing the Leader's Edge. Back right. to you, Paul. Uh, do, do, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, I, I, I completely concur. Uh, I, I've had more jobs than I care to admit. <laughs> Not even get me started about getting fired. So, <laughs> one dream today will be different from, from a dream tomorrow. But yeah, yeah. pursue what you've got. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, babe, but what's nice about your experience is you get hired every time. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, true. That, that, that's very encouraging. <laughs> yeah. mm. All right, so I guess we, we move Let's on. Let's continue, to, Dino, yeah. Here we go. Nice metaphor. Look at me go. Two, 
Don't seek happiness. Happiness is like an orgasm. If you think about it too much, it goes away. <laughs> Keep busy and aim to make someone else happy and you might find you get some as a side effect. Anyway. We didn't evolve to be constantly content. Contented Homo erectus got eaten before passing on their genes. <laughs> Three, remember it's all luck. You are lucky to be here. You are incalculably, incalculably lucky to be born and incredibly lucky to be brought up by a nice family that helped you get educated and encouraged you to go to uni. Or if you were born into a horrible family, that's unlucky and you have my sympathy, but you are still lucky. Lucky that you happen to be made of the sort of DNA that went on to make the sort of brain which, when placed in a horrible childhood environment, would make decisions that meant you ended up eventually graduating uni. <laughs> well done, you, for dragging yourself up by your shoelaces, but you were lucky. You didn't create the bit of you that dragged you up. They're not even your shoelaces. <laughs> I suppose I worked hard to achieve whatever dubious achievements I've achieved, but I didn't make the bit of me that works hard. And more than any more than I made the bit of me that ate too many burgers instead of attending lectures when I was here at UWA. <laughs> Understanding that you can't truly take credit for your successes nor truly blame others for their failures will humble you and make you more compassionate. Empathy is intuitive but is also something you can work on intellectually. Okay, I think I should, we should pause there. Wow! <laughs> uh, you know, there's a reason why I always say when I do the editing for, for our shows, this is not for children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, I, I like people who can, who can talk like that um, and, and not be embarrassed by it. Hmm. I thoroughly enjoy that, that, uh, that part of his speech. How about you, Jet? What do you think? Uh, I never thought of happiness that way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come to think of it, I haven't thought much about orgasm today, which is probably why I still enjoy them. <laughs> but, but, but here you find a guy who's, who's witty, but also self effacing mm. calling his own achievements do good. Yeah. Uh, he, I, I think the, 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 that the speech is characterized by that. He, mm. he tends to uh, yeah, be self effacing for fun of himself, mm. but he's assertive. You can't get much more assertive than, than saying you know, happiness is like an orgasm. <laughs> Think about it too long ago. <laughs> oh, the last time I heard something like that was from Margarita Holmes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that, yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe we should get something from her. <laughs> that, she, would, is, that would be fascinating. <laughs> what, is, she still, is she still alive? Uh, I think she is, but uh, uh, well, I, I haven't... I haven't heard much from her yeah or anything like <laughs> that <laughs> all right so, you know uh, the one thing i appreciate most about the speech is it really comes across as authentic like and, you know it's him mm. uh, because the way, the way he talks is it's really this is me this is what i'm saying this is what i'm thinking okay <laughs> and, he, and he says don't take offense he even says it even before he says it you know? so but it, it really comes across as authentic. And again, this is pretty much a counter, a counter, how would you say, a, maybe a counter culture, because when it comes to speakers, usually they talk about happiness and you, know, you must have a goal, you must have a dream, and all of these things. Now, I'm not saying that's invalid, but he's, he's also showing another, what I feel is a more real uh, approach to things. Uh, you know, when he said uh, it's all luck, you know, most successful people will say they were lucky. They will. I mean, there, there are a couple of people who won't, you know, but but most of them will say they were lucky. Mm. And uh, so even even the successful people realize that, you know, luck luck is a, it's a big thing. It's a, it plays a big part in, in their success, if you want to say. But that's also maybe an expression of humility, you know, that was a knee mm. kind of deal. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's, it's just so... Uh, you know, when when you talk about one person, like you said at the beginning, climbing up the mountain, making his dream, you know, that's one person. But what about the other million of people who who don't even do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and that's who he's talking to. And that's what I find uh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Dino. Okay. Uh, I, I thought that I, I 
in, in listening to him, I, I realized that there's a new way of giving a keynote address that doesn't have to be so um, so stressful. Because like you, um, we think of keynote addresses as always inspiring, always lofty. So sometimes I get invited to to a government agency to do their flag ceremony speech. You know what those are like. Yeah. Right? You, you get up early in the morning, everybody looks sleepy, and then you're supposed to rally the troops so that they go to work encouraged. And it's really tough to, to write a, a good speech that will remove them from their doldrums, especially since they probably heard something like it in the last several weeks. So his style of speaking is liberating I mean, and and he gets paid for it right. um, I, I also know no motherhood yep. yeah no motherhood statement or yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, nothing like that uh, right. but the best part Paul and Jet is as I was watching that video I looked at the the, the person who introduced him earlier he looked worried you know, there were times he was smiling and laughing, and other times he looked shocked and and pale. <laughs> I I bet he made the pacemaker in that guy's chest have a workout. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I remember one of my this was during the pandemic when it just started. Somebody interviewed me about leadership and stuff like that, and he said, uh, "Paul, do you have any words for all aspiring and for the aspiring leaders who are listening to you?" <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> you just I might go. get it. <laughs> <I> <laughs> because you know, in my life, I reached a point where I've been there hmm. and I didn't like it. <laughs> I said, never mind, let's do something else. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good point right speaking. there. Because th there was a time I, I went to this telecommunications company and I said, why are all of the staff, you know, the linemen, why do all of them have white hair? And what? Who's this guy? Their manager? He looks like he's fresh out of college. What's going on here? <laughs> and then, they, uh, without naming the company. And, and they, they tell me that the, these folks like being linemen because they don't like the responsibility and the loss of personal freedom. Uh, when you go up the ranks because you know when you get promoted you get more responsibility and that there's more thinking time that you have to exert unlike you know when you're a line man when your day is done you go home without any baggage so uh, no wonder they <laughs> none of them wanted to get promoted jet you're gonna say something yeah just one comment i didn't notice on the from the video uh the, about the guy who introduced him as worried what I saw was 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 Tim looking toward, toward uh, I presume the chancellor for approval. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time we got reverend looking, yeah, <laughs> chancellor was was just having fun like the rest of us. <laughs> mm. Well, if I, understood, if I understood correctly, he came from that school, and maybe he knows the yeah. chancellor personally. Mm. Okay, Possibly. maybe the chancellor was his teacher or something. So very like <laughs> yeah, he mentioned he was looking for his poetry teacher in the audience. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll continue with the sharing and the video. Four exercise. I'm sorry, you pasty pale smoking philosophy grads arching your eyebrows into a Cartesian curve as you watch the human movement mob winding their way through them, the miniature traffic cones of their existence. You are wrong and they are right. <laughs> well, you're half right. You think, therefore you are, but also you jog, therefore you sleep, therefore you're not overwhelmed by existential angst. Okay. You can't be can't <laughs> and you don't want to be. Play a sport, do yoga, pump iron, run, whatever, but take care of your body. You're going to need it. Most of you mob are going to live to nearly a hundred, and even the poorest of you will achieve a level of wealth that most humans throughout history could not have dreamed of. And this long, luxurious life ahead of you is going to make you depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but don't despair. There is an inverse correlation between depression and exercise. Do it. Run, my beautiful intellectuals. Run. <laughs> Five, be hard on your opinions. A famous Bon Mott asserts that opinions are like assholes, <laughs> and that everyone has one. Yep. 
There is great wisdom in this, but I would add that opinions differ significantly from assholes and that yours should be constantly and thoroughly examined. <laughs> I used to do exams in here. It's revenge. We must think critically and not just about the ideas of others. Be hard on your beliefs, take them out onto the veranda and hit them with a cricket bat. Be intellectually rigorous, identify your biases, your prejudices, your privileges. Most of society's arguments are kept alive by a failure to acknowledge nuance. We tend to generate false dichotomies and then try to argue one point using two entirely different sets of assumptions, like two tennis players trying to win a match by hitting beautifully executed shots from either end of separate tennis courts. By the way, while I have science and arts graduates in front of me, please don't make the mistake of thinking the arts and sciences are at odds with one another. That is a recent, stupid and damaging idea. You don't have to be unscientific to make beautiful art to write beautiful things. If you need proof, Twain, Douglas Adams, Vonnegut, McEwan, Sagan, Shakespeare, Dickens for a start. You don't need to be superstitious to be a poet. You don't need to hate GM technology to care about the beauty of the planet. You don't have to claim a soul to promote compassion. Science is not a body of knowledge nor a belief system. It is just a term which describes humankind's incremental acquisition of understanding. Okay, let's pause there. <laughs> wow. It's amazing how he can speak so fast uh, without, without losing his, his train of thought. It's, Seldom that I, I see somebody, you know, that funny and that, that good, just let things flow. Jet, let's start with you. What he was talking about, uh, uh, the body, taking care of the body, mm. and then goes into the subject of depression, and then goes to the mind. Mm. I don't know how, how significant that is, the, how taking care of your body can battle depression and... and um, and now everybody has an asshole and an opinion, <laughs> and to, to 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 seek that opinion, uh, get the opinion of others. Don't be stuck to one. That that's that's my understanding. I love how he I love he how he uh, employs analogies again, hmm. uh, cones of your life, and then tennis courts from opposite. <laughs> and you know, again, if you don't get it, you don't get it. But but and yet, and yet he makes sure you do. You do yeah. get it because he continues to be to to, to assert himself. The, uh, he he's speaking like an expert at thirty-seven point nine. He's speaking like an expert, and it makes perfect sense. Over to you, Dino. Yeah, um, I, I have a feeling that anybody who with a proctology major would have agreed with him. <laughs> <laughs> and look forward to all the patients that they're going to have. I can't uh, even spell that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because um, I, I like the way that he he uses irreverence and um, um, language to to poke fun at long held beliefs and ideas and, and make people challenge. Uh, because if you're going to ask people to do something that's difficult, you may as well make them laugh when they consider it I, I've heard Paul before talk about the the difficulty of being able to hold two opposing views in your head as you as you consider something that somebody is saying because that's the only way to be able to have a balanced reaction uh, you know and that's really difficult to have two opposing thoughts in in your mind at the same time hmm. uh, thank you Dino <laughs> Actually, there's so much that he said that is uh, maybe coming into the forefront only now. Mm. Okay, they're talking about your your cognitive biases. They're talking about a self awareness. All these things are are becoming how do you call um, I mean, in front, like they're sitting in the front now of everything. Mm. And uh, admittedly, uh, there's a little more on the serious note, especially about leadership. Uh, we were trained in a school that was chasing money. Yeah. Okay, and and they would they would even do it uh, using fear. Mm -hmm. That's what it was based on. And the, the, for for us, for some of us, we can't think beyond that because that's the only thing we know. 
Okay. So, uh, so if you look at when you work with some organizations, you know they, they they they're stuck in they're still stuck in the mold because they they don't have that capacity to think beyond their opinion. Mm. They just can't. Okay. Uh, and the the uh, the point he was making about the opinion is, and this I'm borrowing a quote from Saul Bellow, and he said, "If the illusion is strong enough, you will exert a lot of effort to maintain your ignorance." Something wow. like that, okay. And I said exactly. So I said, yes, you have an opinion, but my goodness, if your if your illusion is so big, I don't care what you say, your mm. opinion will always be right. <laughs> I mean, so, but I, I like the way he expressed it. You, know what mm. I mean? you should have it examined regularly. <laughs> yeah, beat it with a cricket uh, cricket bat. <laughs> Jet, but, then, you but you know, even that have it examined regularly, it it, it conjured pain. You yeah, know what I mean, even though it was, it was a little, a very how do you say, very, uh, you know, very. Uh, I, I, I can't graphic. Yes, maybe that's the term. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah. uh, be a masochist with your own ideas. <laughs> But what he assumes that every yeah everybody has an opinion. So yes. I I there are people who who will who would claim that they have no opinion about something one way or the, one way or the other. Um, maybe he's saying that's not true. Everybody has an opinion on some things. Mm. Everybody has one, mm. and yours should be thoroughly and completely <laughs> examined. <laughs> <laughs> what I like is that, and especially Dino, you you teach communication. I don't know if Jet, if you if you also teach communication, but they, they talk a lot about uh, the levels of uh, this relative to the levels of listening. Mm. And when you look at the levels of listening, one of the biggest levels to overcome is, you know, you start thinking, let's say I'm listening to Dino or listening to Jet, but in my mind there's something telling me, yeah, he's still wrong and I'm right. <laughs> a little voice. <laughs> Okay, I'll listen. I'll nod my head. I'll paraphrase and everything. But in my mind, yeah, he's still wrong. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. that that that's one of the bigger hurdles to overcome when you look at the levels of listening because it's it's really difficult. You know, Paul, you're not going to get an argument from either Jet or or me because all of us we're we're married. Uh, we know what that's like. We, we live with that every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we, we we can say something and they'll listen to us, but in their mind, they're they're, they're still thinking we're wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. right. Do you know? I, do you know? I, I long, long yeah. accepted it. We're we're guilty of that too. We just say yes, dear. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> but in our mind, you're still wrong. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the the old cliche, like oh. I keep the peace at home. I make only the major decisions. My wife makes the minor ones, you know, like where the kids go to school, where we're going to live. I make major ones like, should there be world peace? You know, major. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, um, let's go on with uh, the speech. So far, it's been a really great talk that he's been giving. Through observation, science is awesome. The arts and sciences need to work together to improve how knowledge is communicated. The idea that many Australians, including our new PM and my distant cousin Nick Minchin, believe that sci the science of anthropogenic global warming is controversial is a powerful indicator of the extent of our failure to communicate. The fact that 30% of the people in this room just bristled is further evidence still. <laughs> the fact that that bristling is more to do with politics than science is even more despairing. Six. Be a teacher, please, please, please be a teacher. Teachers are the most admirable and important people in the world. You don't have to do it forever, but if you're in doubt about what to do, be an amazing teacher. Just for your 20s, be a teacher. Be a primary school teacher, especially if you're a bloke. We need male primary school teachers. Even if you're not a teacher, be a teacher. Share your ideas. Don't take for granted your education. Rejoice in what you learn and spray it. <laughs> Seven, define yourself by what you love. I found myself doing this thing a bit recently where if someone asks me what sort of music I like, I say, well, I don't listen to the radio because pop song lyrics annoy me. Or if someone asks me what food I like, I say, I think truffle oil is overused and slightly obnoxious. 
And I see it all the time online, people whose idea of being part of a subculture is to hate Coldplay or football or feminists or the Liberal Party. We have a tendency to define ourselves in opposition to stuff. As a comedian, I make my living out of it. But try to also express your passion for things you love. Be demonstrative and generous in your praise of those you admire. Send thank you cards and give standing ovations. Be pro stuff, not just anti stuff. Eight. Okay, I'll, I'll pause there because he said a lot of really good stuff right there. He, uh, he's um, he he's, he mentioned something unfortunate that the global warming seems to be now still a political a political topic for some rather than a actual scientific. Uh, he he was sure to get that in, and and, and I'm, I'm I'm pleased about that. He also says a uh, rather not rather uh, not nothing special. Be a teacher. Yeah. He, he didn't go around the bush. Be a teacher, please, please be a teacher. <laughs> uh, that that's certainly assertive, uh, and said especially if you're a man or a bloke, <laughs> uh, because they lack primary school teachers who are male. He's mm. he's all about sharing what you know. And empathy and compassion, and uh, well, being pro stuff. That that was very clear. Than an anti stuff, you, you, you just you know, the, the sometimes the 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 most undesirable guy in the room is one who who is negative about everything. Mm. <laughs> he's anti this and anti that. He finds out what what you're what you're in favor of, and he's always against it. So he says, "No, be, be, <laughs> respect the opinions of others while asserting your own." Is is what I understood from what he says. Thank you, Jet. Um, you know, there was a time I, I went to a sing-along bar, and I was introduced to a retired pilot um, whose nationality I won't mention. But I will mention that um, he is very opinionated. And as he was talking, he said, uh, "Could you tell me more about yourself?" And I said, "Why?" And he said, "Because I'd like to know how to attack you." <laughs> Like, okay, in my mind, I was going, sure, I went to a bar to be attacked <laughs> verbally or in an argument. So I said, oh, wait, I see a friend. <laughs> I see Fred. And so uh, I, I'll say hi because I haven't seen him in a while. So I got out of that particular dilemma very, very quickly. Cause you're right. Um, the, the, our, our speaker tonight uh, is right that People tend to be more negative or see the negative aspect of life more, which is why bad news sells and good news sometimes is overlooked. And we need more positivity in this world. Um, there was a time, that I, I don't know if you were like that, but I turned off Facebook for almost a month because during the height of the pandemic and all of the troll wars <laughs> going on, I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. Like, why, why are so many people so easily triggered? And so I said, I will stay off for a month. And Tim, uh, just hit it on the head. Let's let's be positive instead of negative. You know, uh, what you've said, Jet, and Dino, you know, it, it covers a lot. And what I find most amazing about this speech is, you listen, if you listen to our conversation, it, it goes everywhere, the conversation <laughs> we're having now. And this is just his speech, and it covers a lot of things all all in one speech, if you want to say. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate because even from a, for me in a global view, uh, especially the U.S., ever since they became a world power, they've defined themselves by the enemy they have. Okay, they don't. Uh, when they ran out of enemies, it I said they joked. They just turned in on each other. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so first, 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 it was the communists, right? Mm. They find communism everywhere and attack it. Then it became terrorists, mm. right? And so now, what is it? <laughs> okay. So they just said they just found yeah. a way to turn into turn in on themselves, or or somebody orchestrated it, which is what I think. But that somebody was smart enough to understand the american psyche very well mm -hmm. okay <laughs> that he he just literally used it but anyway uh, uh you know the the thing about being positive and as jet said you know 
or you were saying, you know, just you know, there's always that one negative person in the room and things like that. And this was fascinating because there was one training I was doing, and there was this one particular guy who was exactly that. Mm. Okay, he was uh, what you would call uh, a sniper. Everything you oh. say, he'd always have something sarcastic to say, and you know, in a very condescending way. Mm. At my worst, that's me. Anything that comes out of your mouth, I could take it and stab you in the heart with it. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, and, you know, during the lunch break, he approached me. And he spoke to me in all sincerity and said, you know, bless the bad words. He said, Paul, am I in whole? Okay. <laughs> and I said, you know, you know, you are. I said, it's not, it's not, it's not that I don't like you. You're fine, but you are. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I just told him straight to his face. After that, he calmed down. Mm. Okay, he wasn't as 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 how do you call as 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 militant well, I, I, as I, before. I saw, I saw that coming. I saw that coming. <laughs> I, I didn't think that you would uh, you you would you would say, "Nah, you're fine." No, you said you're an asshole. <laughs> you confirmed. <laughs> you answered this question, and and you're all the better for it. And so is he, apparently. So yeah, that's the way to do it. You know, that's that's funny. This is this is uh. This is a uh, uh, how do you call it? when my daughters come to me for advice about how to how to confront bosses who they feel like they're doing the wrong thing, if you want to say. Mm. And I said, look, first of all, just mention data. Don't mention any particular behavior. Mm. Okay, if you do mention a behavior, it's fine. But when you mention it, I said, when you speak, do your best to speak with absolutely no emotion. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. So it just comes across as you reading reading data. It's not you know. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I could just tell Dino, you know, the in the last conversation when you had when you mentioned this name, I w- I felt badly about that because it's not I don't come across as as like I'm attacking you, mm. or as if you know I'm out to kill you. I just I'm just mentioning the data. Mm. <laughs> so, but uh, it's, uh, the, you know the the first time I listened to the speech, I said this is nice, it was entertaining, but now when I'm talking with you guys, it it seems to be really going all over the place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In other words, uh, it's very ap- many of the things he's saying. It applies to so many areas of our lives. So right. it's amazing that they they got him as a keynote speaker. Yep. Mm. Okay, let's listen to the last two parts of of his speech. Respect people with less power than you. I have in the past made important decisions about people I work with, agents and producers. Big decisions based largely on how they treat the wait staff in the restaurants we're having the meeting in. I don't care if you're the most powerful cat in the room, I will judge you on how you treat the least powerful. So there. (laughs) Nine, finally, don't rush. You don't need to already know what you're going to do with the rest of your life. I'm not saying sit around smoking cones all day, but also don't panic. (laughs) Most people I know who were sure of their career path at 20 are having midlife crises now. I said at the beginning of this ramble, which is already three and a half minutes long, that life is meaningless. It was not a flippant assertion. I think it's absurd, the idea of seeking meaning in the set of circumstances that happens to exist after 13.8 billion years worth of unguided events. Leave it to humans to think the universe has a purpose for them. However, I am no nihilist. I'm not even a cynic. I am actually rather romantic. And here's my idea of romance. You will soon be dead. (laughs) Life will sometimes seem long and tough and God, it's tiring and you will sometimes be happy and sometimes sad and then you'll be old and then you'll be dead. There is only one sensible thing to do with this empty existence and that is fill it. Not fill it, fill it. And in my opinion, until I change it, Life is best filled by learning as much as you can about as much as you can, taking pride in whatever you're doing, having compassion, sharing ideas, running, being enthusiastic. And then there's love and travel and wine and sex and art and kids and giving and mountain climbing, but you know all that (laughs) stuff already. It's an incredibly exciting thing, this one meaningless life of yours. Good luck and thank you for indulging me. Wow. Whew. Oh, that that was that was a fantastic speech. Thank you again, Paul, for suggesting. <laughs> let's, let's start with you, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I, I like the things that he said about uh, life being ultimately meaningless because 
and and he said it in such a funny way because in the Bible when you read about Solomon and what he had to say at the end of his life you know he became the the richest guy on the planet right I mean the son of David yeah. um, in his dying moment he whispered to the person who was right next to him he said it is all useless it is all useless so in other words the accumulation of wealth becoming the most influential most powerful king Israel ever had to him was useless so uh, yeah well, how can you how can you be happy when you spend your days helping two distraught women decide who gets to keep the baby and then telling them get a sword and split it in half so you get to keep half of, of one <laughs> um, that couldn't have been fun um, it, it sounds to me like he got cynical or you know maybe got tired of being the king all the time uh, so Tim mentions message of fill your life you know like fill it just reminded me of the bucket list you know that movie with who was that Morgan Morgan Freeman Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson and Jack Ni oh I, I, I yeah. love those two because they reminded me so much of uh, Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau I don't know if <laughs> odd, <you're> couple. <laughs> odd couple odd <laughs> couple you're telling uh, everyone how old you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get free parking and free movies now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's why I, I, I totally agree <laughs> with Tim that, yeah, eventually that's all there is to it. You know, we grow old, we die. So why, why sweat it? Why worry too much? Just try to fill every moment with something that you love to do, something meaningful. But it doesn't have to be like, world shaking or anything like that over to you guys how about you Jack? Within, yep. yeah well, within one sphere of influence i think that's what he's saying and and notice how how positive it is compassion fill that void in your life Not, nothing nothing machiavellian like like uh, the end justifies the means and <laughs> he, he he's, he's essentially telling us you don't even have to think that far mm. what if what 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 what, what can you do uh, ab ab about life because you will soon be dead. Mm. <laughs> and and he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't worry about the legacy you're going to leave behind your children and so on. Mm. And, and I think very practical. Um, I like to think that by, by, by following his nine points, you, you save a lot of energy mm. and you probably live longer. <laughs> uh, ha having, you know, like I said, ha having more jobs than I care to admit and so on life experiences four kids too like just like Paul uh, <laughs> three of them are still in school yeah and if I really try to think way way ahead I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be dead sooner <laughs> <laughs> positive positive, positive. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's true <laughs> you know you know Jet, uh, uh the time I lost all my money mm. uh my youngest daughter was just born Wow, I, I lost my job, I lost all my money, and I had four kids Ooh. at home. <laughs> and I even owed people money. Mm. And uh, when I talk about my story and my life, I go, you know, when you reach that, that point in life, I said, what I did, I said, I had no idea what to do. I said, at least my wife didn't leave me, thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I, I, just, I just focused on what I had to do that day. And at that point in time, it was literally being a house, housebend, mm. okay. Because my wife was out working, and I was the one taking care of the house, cooking, cleaning, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it, it it was it was a routine, mm -hmm. regimented. You wake up what at four in the morning, go to sleep at eleven, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but it was regimented, and, and these I just had to do. If not, they, they wouldn't eat. The house wouldn't be clean. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. so I just focused on that. Eventually, it, it turned around, mm -hmm. but. You know, going back to what you said, and I'm not somebody who, who likes to talk too much about the Bible, or even though I am a Catholic, but not a very good one. <laughs> uh, you know, one message that's very clear with God is He doesn't expect us to be happy. He expects us to be faithful. Mm, okay. Uh, and so, it, so if you're faithful, it'll be fine. And, uh, and the way I put it, maybe in a less religious way, I said, you know, you don't for me, and I thought about this during the pandemic. I said, you know, you shouldn't be chasing happiness. Just live life responsibly and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. As long as you go to bed every single night, knowing that you did your tasks or, you know, you did what you were responsible for, you're fine. <laughs> so, 
So that, that, again, it makes a whole lot of sense what he's saying, and he presents it from a very, um, a very brutal side of the of the picture. If you want to say, it's like me answering the guy directly. Yes, you are. It's whole okay. <laughs> he just says it in his face, but it, it carries so much so much weight. If you want to say, uh, the story you had about Solomon. I mean, how many people? When they say, you know, what's your life goal? I said, you know, I, I want to be a CEO. I said, no, 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 that's an achievement. Yeah. What, what's your aspiration? What kind of person do you want to be? You know, <laughs> I can assure you if, you, if you put a group of 25 to 30 years old in a room and ask how many of you here want to be a billionaire, most of them will raise their hand. And then you ask immediately after, what for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They don't know. Okay. So what do you want to be a billionaire for? <laughs> so, I, I used yeah. to joke that my ambition was to be a philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul, you, you mentioned that, well, like, like, like you, I'm also Catholic. But what, what I, what the thought that came to me just now is, uh, here Minchin betrays, I think, I think he's an atheist. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't believe in a supreme being. Uh, he believes that that um, that we exist in a universe that that's you know, almost a, a speck of dust in a big universe. Unlike the Christian teaching, where where you know, God God put us on the earth to take care of it, and and yes, um, he 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 never said uh, drink, be merry, for tomorrow you're going to die. God never said that. <laughs> we're not supposed to be happy because we we will be happy only in the next life. Mm. Uh, so I I I, I can't help thinking about that uh and um and yeah we we were put here we have a duty to, to ourselves to, to our children and so on but being a billionaire being a philanthropist uh, if, 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 if it comes it comes <laughs> mm. well you, you can always choose to conquer mars hmm? oh yeah like elon musk <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there are these guys who are uh, these futurists who want to think we enter the future. And I said, the signal that the universe will start dying mm. is when we've actually managed to conquer another planet. Ooh. And I thought why, about why it. That? <laughs> yeah. Well, because all we do, we wrecked our planet. We're going to go to another planet and wreck <laughs> oh, it, then yeah, go no, to the okay. next planet and wreck that yeah. one too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's like Mr. Smith saying in the Matrix that I discovered that humans are like a virus; they just spread everywhere and make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So um, this has been a, a great ride for for all of us. After that series of very serious analysis of world leaders, we finally got somebody who talks plain sense in a short amount of time using language designed to to entertain but with value wow once again thank you paul for nominating him you know the one thing that i really appreciate most about this speech is it wasn't long mm. okay as you said i went here for about three minutes so let's say it was a total of five minutes come yeah. on the toastmasters you, you, your time is seven yes okay <laughs> <laughs> all right but but yet in all of, in that in that short of span of a time, he was able to to elicit so many so many stories from us, mm. so many points of view from us, and really the in this case, the power of the speech really was in the words and message that he had to bring. Mm. Uh, in some cases, it's it's the orator himself was really good, and mm. he can bring the words to life if you want to say. But this one, it was really it was just the words and plus the fact that he spoke well, you know, it just came through very very well. Mm. What do you think, Chad? Uh, he he took it seriously, but not seriously. <laughs> Coming up with nine, I mean, you know, he or maybe he had he had some writers, a team of writers, who knows? But uh, to come up with nine was 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 no little feat, that, that's for sure. And yet he was he was not serious, maybe in in delivering it, but but I think he was assertive enough. Um, he was. Uh, he had a, a few dis disclaimers to, to use current um, terminology uh, to 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 be self-effacing to 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 kind of qualify himself that hey I'm 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 no big shot here but but I'm, but 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 I've been through this and I know this 
and um, kind of a take it or leave it attitude, which is fine. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, he was he was not serious, but he was serious, and I think he he got across. He certainly got across to me, even if I haven't seen the inside of the university in ages. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's very good. I I don't have a problem relaying this speech to to my own children who will be graduating from from university mm. soon. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Yeah, my, you know, thank you, Jet. Do you know? My own, my own closing comments would be: if you watch the rest of the video, I I feel very, very sorry for the person who had to uh, give him the plaque of appreciation or the the the, uh, the award, because in a karaoke bar, you always pray for a, a Japanese tourist to sing ahead of you. Because then, no matter what, you you you're probably going to sound better, uh, without any disrespect to my Japanese friends out there. Okay, uh, but you know, if if Gary V happened to drop in the bar and sing, and it's your turn next, you're you're going to pay the waiter a thousand bucks just so that you you're not next. Because if you listen to the rest of that video, the the the, the person who had to express appreciation just really paled by comparison and we're not going to listen to that part because it might be <laughs> depressing <laughs> Dino and I, I'd have to pay the waiter 10,000 if you ask me to dance like Gary Vee <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded of, of, of a far more pedestrian situation when, when you're in a jeepney say oh, I mean, we've okay. all taken jeepneys <laughs> yeah. and then the guy who the guy, the guy who has to, who's getting off at the next step says Mama para. Yep. <laughs> and the rest of the GP says, Ang ganda ng boses ng mama. And then you're next. <laughs> oh, <what> you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you, you do the sensible thing. You you just pitik the the roof. <laughs> well, used to be a good thing. And the GP would stop it. I know about these days. <laughs> <laughs> But I know exactly what you're saying, Dean. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, over to you, Paul. And uh, everybody who's watched this episode, I, you know, if you really enjoyed this and you want to continue, please, please, please uh, click on the like and especially share. This definitely helps us and our and our TikToks because next or uh, soon, upcoming very soon, is we'll be trying a new format which is really focused more on humor, but it'll be more, you know. Maybe everyday humor, like what happens in the office or what happens in your life, but it'll be focused more on humor and make it a little lighter. These conversations, like today, uh, it's as Jet pointed out, uh, he he was serious but not serious. He's talking about serious things, but he approached it in a very not serious way. <laughs> okay, and as always, learning is a never-ending journey with limitless vistas.